Hey guys, it's Tony from AE Construction. You're watching Build with AE, and no, it's not a tool review. This is all going to be about Regency and digger work. Loads and loads of digger work. So if you love your diggers, you'll love this episode. We're going through all of the process of actually doing all of the relevant driveway works. The other thing I need to mention is that our YouTube analytics actually say that only a quarter of you guys are subscribing. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because it really helps our channel. Check out our Instagram, our LinkedIn, and also Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts because they have loads of cool content on as well. Enjoy the video. See you at the end. Take care. What we've done is we've actually dug this trench and then we've moved the electrical cable which was here, this about this height, and then we've let it drop down naturally. Because we've got cars and trucks coming through this section here, we're going to lag it and then we're going to cover it with pipe. Now one thing we are going to do is once we've done that, we then put this top bit on top like that. Just clamp it tight like that. I'm going to zip tight here as well. And then by putting a couple of zip ties on. There we go. This will do the job really nicely. And it just gives this cable through the main driveway a little bit of extra protection, which is really key. Cut that off. Right, so I'm gonna do now is I'll work for how long. Uh, yeah, we've got the Osma lubricant that you need to uh, do the relevant pipe work with. Anybody who knows, if you're doing stuff underground, below ground, it's always brown. If you're going to do above, it's always black or grey or white. We always end up putting lubricant around here and then obviously then on the fittings as well. So we're going to put another pipe all the way down along here like this, all the way along. Let's crack on. Pinch a bit. Let's do inside here. Inside the ring, get some lube in there. Look, boom. Okay, it's made by poly pipe. This is this is known as a coupler. This joins one pipe to another pipe. So what we're gonna do? Feed it through. Yep. There you go. It's nice. Twist it around. Get ourselves another length of pipe. Same again. Put the chain on the end. Let the chain do the work. There we go. Use the weight of the chain. There we go. Comes out the other end. Boom. Makes life a bit easier. Okay, mate. That's it. Okay, big. Beautiful, that's it. Love this, she's in. Okay, mate, got it. Okay, mate. Inside here, it's got like a plastic grommet. And what happens if you don't lubricate the rings, what happens is that when it goes in dry to dry rubber, it forces this out. And even though you think, oh yeah, yeah, it's got, it's nice and tight, it's, it doesn't. And then all of a sudden, then uh, you'll start to have it leaking and that. Now, the only thing I don't like about collars is that you have to grind this little bit out here because then sometimes you do need a slip collar and unfortunately this isn't a slip collar but uh, you can buy them but it's, it's they're more and more difficult to get a hold of but uh, slip collars do come in handy the only thing i think they should do with slip collars is probably make them a little bit longer i think they should make them like another four inches longer but uh, hey ho there we go see how easy that goes on and look spins beautifully always give it a spin look at that it's gone on really well so all i'm going to do now the pipe that's going to come off there. I'm going to literally stick that in 90 degrees where the joint's going to come through at that point down there. That will then allow them feed for the electric gates, which will be done later on. So I'm just going to connect that up now. Now, the one thing I've got to do is get the string through there that way because that's going to continue through. So, a bit tight on the old knees in here. There we go. That's in. Now the reason I wanted this side here is because of that T-piece, which is basically there. That's going to allow me to then run a separate electric cable up onto the electric gates, which are going here. The local electrical distribution place around us is called Western Power. The one key thing is whenever you're laying electric cables or gas piping, you should make sure that you always, always put this tape in. I actually do a bit of a double whammy. I'll lay it on top of these pipes, but then I'll lay it another 12 inches above there. Just let people know that it's not far away from electric cables, so. Beautiful, look at that. And then what we'll do is run that across. Pete's now just finishing this off, so we stuck it with tape on the top. And what that's doing, we'll now start to cover that with a bit of sand. Just got to put a piece of pipe in this connection up here, which Pete's uh, gonna go and, in fact, he's cut already, look at that. Pete's ahead of me. It's always great when you get a bloke who's working with you and knows exactly what you want next. 
Right, let's get in the digger. It's only got to open up the door. Wee, that's one. The other window's open. Come in, baby. Where's my key? Do you know, does anybody else have this issue? I'm always put my keys down and I can't find them sometimes, but look, it's how bad it's got. Fire up, here we go, baby. Now, if you notice, when I'm working with Pete, it's always about trust with diggers and making sure you know what you're doing. So as soon as you look, this label here, look, move the handle up, that means now, go to any part of the control of the digger. It's not gonna move, I'm not gonna kill my mate. All right, Pete. Okay, arms down, mate. You're away. So what we've had here now is the uh, grab lorry turn up. So what we're going to do is get a lot of the additional soil away from here. Anybody who knows or doesn't know that a grab lorry normally takes about three and a half, four skips. It's a lot, lot cheaper than the skips because obviously skips now are really expensive. But whenever you can get soil and rubble away, I would definitely, definitely use grab lorry. So uh, the guy that we use is the MJ Grab Hire, great company. Mickey Jordan who runs the company. So let's get in. Let's get this thing loaded. So what we're going to do is just scrape the surface a little bit, level it off. We've actually got a sand bed along the line where the electric cable is. So that gives us a great indication when we grab in. We can make sure that we don't then take belay on that line. So what I'm going to do now is dump all the soil, ready for the grab lorry to get there, get that access out there. Now is the digger is actually on a slight angle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the digger around and the boom around so spin around like that because so I want a decent level base and what I can do is I can use that boom arm there or the blade as you might call it I can use that to tip me back up level which is uh, really important when you're using diggers so try and keep yourself as level as you can Obviously the only thing is now is every time we go forward I have to pull the levers back instead of forward. So you can see I'm on a slight angle now. So all I'm going to do is lift the boom up the back. There you go. It just tilts me nice and level. So I'm just going to get in here now. Just level this off where I want it to be. Scoop a bit of soil up. But look at that. I'll tell you what, there's nothing more satisfying than scooping a bit of soil. It's a real privilege to work in a beautiful old house like this. One of the one things I do love in my job is coming and working on old properties. I don't know what it is, you just think about them, just the history, the quality of the workmanship that we were stirring. And you think back all those years, they didn't have all the fancy tools that we have now. A lot of it was either done by hand, they had like the real basic power tools, didn't they? When you look back at it, compared to what we got now, I mean, we've got like pretty much so many tools that will just do the job for you, really. So I'm starting to get where I want to be now. Give myself a little pile. So imagine what I'm trying to do is clear all the soil around the digger. So the last pile to pick up is actually the pile I'm actually sitting on. Pull it nice and evenly all the way across the ground. Just pull it in, boom. There we go. And that is. Right, so what you see, I'm going to lift the blade up now. I'm going to roll back. See, look, I've got a mound here, got a mound there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move some of that out of the way. beautiful old railing that must have been here that's like an original from here that is a, a great great find really really pleased with that get it washed off and see what it's like do you know as a kid i never thought i'd actually be having my own construction company 
become a carpenter's joy now. I was never very bright at school, to be fair. I'd always been told I'd do a quakes and a thing, and I uh, feel like turning around and saying, F you teachers, you know, what do you know, you know? Because uh, I do get a little bit annoyed because they're in such a position of great power. And I'm not saying that every teacher is like that, but I, I had a couple of teachers at my old school when I was a lad, and they, they weren't very helpful at all. Criticised me and other students, and, I do think that's wrong, you know, I think a teacher should be strong and should be that person that you can rely on. I'm not saying all street teachers like that, but just my experience in life, my life is that I left school with no qualifications. Everything that I've had to do now, I've had to just learn and graft and understand. And Hey guys, well it's another rainy day, so here we are. So what we're gonna do is make sure we're gonna clear the rest of this, get it all finished off, which is really key. But as you can see, the heavens has opened up. It's absolutely a disgusting day, but there's an old saying, you don't get a rusty builder, do you? And we're not made of sugar, are we? You have to crack on, get on with it, get the job done. Doesn't this make you feel really warm? Don't know why, it just does me at the moment. Can you see the steam coming off the hydraulic pipes? Look at that, how cool is that? Makes you feel lovely and warm inside. What we're doing, we're clearing all this front bit here at the moment, all the way down here. We're clearing all this out, gonna get this all to the levels that we need to. The sand is the guide, so we're literally just cresting the top of that sand nicely now. So all we're gonna do now is just dig this little bit out. We're then ready to use the tram, which is over there. You'll probably see in the distance this massive long white roll that's going to then put on the base and then we're going to put stone on it and stop it sinking into this clay bound ground which would be good. One of the things you sometimes have to do is uh, as you can see we have to uh, get the last bits up. Peter throws it into the bucket because trying to scrape up will end up damaging all of this edge here we don't want that we need to make sure we keep it intact sometimes you have to uh, get shovel and digger working together hey just get your shovel under there mate see what this is all right this is a bit of old cap in a sense okay let's have a look oh look at that how cool is that that is absolutely beautiful look at that this has got to be nearly 100 years old this has look at that and there's obviously a bit of stone that was left when they actually did the main railings running all the way along here years and years and years ago. Look at that, hasn't even been drilled into. That is an absolute beauty. That'd be great to put through the railings. Here we go, guys. Whee! What a find we've had today. We've had a bit of an old railing. We're going to clean all this down and then the stone as well. How cool is that? That's just absolutely beautiful. So here we go guys, got a little bit of history for you. Got an old land drain here. Look at that, is that pretty cool? Now over the years you can definitely tell that all the soil, the silt builds up inside the actual land drain. The only thing I always thought to myself every time I see a land drain, why did they have them that way? But it makes sense, you know, just lay it straight onto a clay bed. Clay's pretty waterproof, isn't it? Probably bedded it down with a bit of mortar and then just lined them up in a row. And then obviously all that does then, it just literally takes any land water away. That's really what they were designed for. We've got a couple over here. This is basically what they would have done. All they would have done is just bed it onto clay, nice flat clay, and that's it. And then put a load more clay on top, and that was it. Not rocket science, was it really? You know, sometimes simplicity just works so well, doesn't it?
do once we've got this layer of sanding, we're gonna then run another electric cable. Just getting a bit of sand together. As you do, speak. Throw it on there, mate, and I'll just distribute it there, mate. And then we'll run another bit of tape, can't we? That'll do. Right, let's run another bit of tape, Pete. As every other day gap, we need diesel. So we buy our diesel in, red diesel, through a merchant. So what I'm gonna do now is get this fuel tank as close as I can on decent ground. Just a knock it, Pete. Thanks, mate. So, what we need to do now is get a build up. So what she's really good about this digger, and I think a lot of diggers are pretty much this way, but the old five tonner that we used to hire in and never had a uh, its own pump system. So basically we use the sock just to keep the dust and debris out of this filter section here. All you do then is just literally turn this to green. We then open the homemade key. Oh, homemade key. Well, I love that. That's a Yukon fix <laughs> that is, isn't it, Pete? <laughs> there you go. So what we're gonna do is take the twist out of this first. Right, hopefully that's it. Just push the button. The only thing you need to do there is once you push the button, so it's good. Open this a little bit, just let it suck a bit of air through. I've been told it shuts itself off. You can actually see when you go to here. You can actually see in there, it'll start to uh, fill up. See it come up there, look at that, boom. Turn that off then, Pete. Beautiful. Lock that off. With the latch. Side piece just turned off now. Wrap it up into a coil again. Thank you, mate. Wrap it around. There we go. Now, a bit of a tip here. You can probably actually see here. My blade is here. There's my blade. Now, I want to actually dig this nice and level. Now the thing is, is my blade is actually the wrong side. So my blade is this side at the moment and I need my blade this side so I can use the blade to sit down on the ground, which is always a good thing to do. And then I can actually push the digger up with the blade to level the graded bucket. So watch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the digger around now, lift the blade up. It's always good when you're doing a, a load of clearing is to actually have the blade always down to give you stability and stop it rocking. So now I'm going to spin round, line myself up. The bucket's going to do what I want it to do. You can actually see it's not quite level, so I'm just going to push forward, level myself up. Let myself up a bit more, so 90 degrees. Now you can see my bucket, I'm just on my edge over there, but you can see with the land, the bucket's not level. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this joystick down. You can actually see here now, it's actually going down. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna lift my digger up. You see it just lift the feet up there. You can see the bucket's not quite level. So there you go. Now it's nice and level so I can get the bucket. I can dress that off now. Because I want to scoop this down. I want to dig this down to a better level now. The one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to pull that SRAM, or some people call it geo textile. Now, instead of moving my bucket like this and trying to do it on an angle, all I'll do now, once I've got this to the right depth, then that's where I want to be. I'll actually lay my digger down, move across. Same again, line myself up, get myself nice and level. 
pull it across. There we go, it's pretty level there, isn't it? Pretty good, happy with that. Same again, move along, dipping down a bit, locking myself up. So here we go guys, gonna now get it all leveled off the best we can. As I say, I'm no digger driver, I'm just uh, doing my best, which I'm gonna do now. probably see there the reason I push it away once I've dug the back of the mound it actually makes it easier then to grab pull it up get rid of a shake just get the loose stuff off all I'll do is I'll just spin nice and steady because you never know who's walking around you take it easy everybody wears the uh, hives which is quite important when you've got uh, diggers and booms and that knocking around so I'm just getting through this MOT now, which is the biggest thing is making sure I don't get too much MOT. guys i hope you really enjoyed the video if you do like comment and subscribe my name's tony you've been watching build with any have a great week take care